My name is Crystal. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm talking a little bit about homeschool planning and our term three, and it's my third video, so yay! I'm so excited. You guys, when I started homeschooling about eight years ago, I did not have like any of this information. I didn't really have any of um, like a community yet or anybody to bounce ideas off of, so this is so fun. Just keep in mind that whatever I share, works for us. It may not work for you. It totally depends on your personality and your kids. So thank you again for watching. If I skip stuff, I'm going to skip like math and science today. I've talked about those in past videos, but if there's anything that you have questions about, please let me know. I'm totally here to help and I hope that this is helpful. Okay. And I have an exciting announcement today that I cannot wait to share with you. Okay. So first planning, we do three terms. And each term's about nine to 11 weeks. I sit down on Saturdays and plan out the week. I'm not gonna show you my week. What I am going to show you today is, um, and like our loop schedule, I am going to show you our, my 30,000 foot level log book. For example, this, this, this helps me have a 30,000 foot level view of our entire term. If there are gaps and things like that, then I, um, it's just by week, woo, this was term one. So each week I kind of just make a little mark if we covered it, this, um, and then I can kind of take the, the, the overhead view for the next term and say, okay, what are some things that we skipped? What's something we were really heavy on that maybe we can come back down from? But I just want you to know that looks like a lot of stuff, but you guys, I am, we are done within two hours. Our daughter's uh, roughly second grade, form 1A. Our son is sixth grade, form 2B or 2am, two, two I'm sorry. She's done within an hour and a half, maybe two hours max, depending on what she's doing. Our son is done by lunch. Sometimes he has like, um, you know, an independent read after uh, lunch or something like that, but school does not take long. Our lessons are super short. Oh. Okay, another thing that's been a game changer this year for us is allowing my son, the sixth grader, some independence and autonomy when it comes to his scheduling. I will write down everything that it would be good to cover that week. We don't always get to every single thing. It's real life. Um, he's playing baseball this spring like four times a week. I'm going to have to, you know, change some things up a little bit. Some areas I have like with mom, citizenship, and our island story, and Latin, I work with him. Other things, he chooses which day he works. We're gone to community on Tuesdays. So it's really great to see him take a little bit of that independence and because by high school, you need some of those time management skills, but game changer in terms of attitude with our son. Oh, what do I have to do today? You know, what, mom, what do you have planned? No, he can just look and see what he has and he can tackle it when he wants to. Um, okay, now for the exciting, exciting announcement. I have a new simple study that just released and it is called Pond Creatures. I am so excited. Uh, there's more information on my website. I'm not gonna do a flip through right now, but we're reading through Among the Pond People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. And it's her fourth book. It's my fifth simple study. Um, the only one I have not done is her Forest Among the Forest People. And that's coming hopefully this fall for all of you who have been asking for it. Thank you so much, you guys. I love that this blesses other homeschools as much as it does ours. I really do create them for us. And then it's like, you know, whoever else wants to enjoy these as much as we do. Okay, so we do have, like I said, we have moving into the term three and, and some of the resources we're using. We use, we do go to community once a week right now. Our kids take chameleon, chameleon, what? What is wrong with my brain today? I have a mom brain today. Cotillion, tennis, Spanish, our daughter takes art and cooking. These things are not going to be shown to you today, but they're still extremely important because they're part of our kids' education. Um, okay, so I will first go over morning circle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of fly through stuff. I don't want this to be forever long. I don't think you need an exp explanation for every single thing that I cover. Uh, back to our commentaries. Most things are down in our in my Amazon store. I've talked about these before. For our Bible, uh, a couple read alouds for my daughter. I did not read these to my son during the same time period of history because they're a little more female protagonists. 
And then we're finishing, almost done with Little Pilgrim's Progress. Our son's really excited to be exposed to that story and very excited to read the unabridged version when he is older. Um, okay, so for picture study, we usually use Simply Charlotte Mason. Sorry, I feel like I'm talking really fast today because I just don't want this to be a long video. But sweet, sweet, a humble place. She also provides very high quality cardstock prints for her picture studies and she offers some different ones that um, aren't your typical picture studies. Like Emily Carr is from Canada and she really worked with um, art with Native Americans. So we're studying a lot of that right now. Um, and I really just like her picture studies a lot too and that's ahumbleplace.com. So for poetry, we're doing Walt Whitman. These poetry for young people are great. We use those all the time. And then one of my favorite poetry books for memorization and just exposing our, our kids to different um, poems of all time that we work on memory work once a week. Okay, let's kind of talk about history. Um, our, our Form 2A does three streams. I've talked about this before in other videos, but he already read another Ancient Greece book, so he's reading this. I'm reading um, Our Island Story aloud, which uh, has been really fun, and our daughter even enjoys listening to those. And uh, I'll go to that in a minute. Um, and then our Form 1A student, she's uh, I'm reading through the Book of Indians with her by Hauling C. Hauling. He also did Seabird, Men of the Mississippi, Tree in the Trail, um, Paddle to the Sea. We love his books. Okay, and they're so great and they're so beautiful. This is this is more of um, an antique version. So there are, I believe there are more um, recent versions that you can get your hands on if you're interested in. One, another game changer for us, oftentimes when we are reading, reading about history or geography, um, I try to show real life images whether it be of artifacts or um, pictures from the past, but sometimes that's not possible and that's really hard to draw from. So one another game changer for us is bringing in resources of how to draw. Um, these are great. We don't do the, they're, these are like draw and write. Our, our kids don't do the write part. But in terms of howing, how, how, howing, how to draw, um, there, there's like, you know, that's a confederate soldier but i was tired of looking at stick figures and narrations so that's been a game changer with some of our our son's um narrations and just really giving him the opportunity and tools to draw well along with um give his written narrations now speaking of drawing um and i was talking about canada with geography these books so many moms, so many homeschool moms I know love this book. I have a hard time with it because it's so cartoony. It is in my Amazon store and a lot of people really love it and rely on it. And that's okay. You know, there's um, to each their own. I have a hard time with the cartoony pictures. That's that's fine. My recommendation is this readers is, I don't know. I think they have obviously many. This is the third edition. So, and it's pretty old. The Children's Atlas of the World has... Oh, well, I picked an interesting one, the Netherlands. Real pic, like almost very, very realistic pictures of, and and the, the geography I feel is much more accurate and helpful when, when drawing narrations. And speaking of geography, my son already did this a couple years ago, the draw series for drawing um, is, is, is really great too, but concerning recent events, we're going to be redrawing Europe so that we know where countries are when we talk about them. Okay, so let's see, what else? Reading and writing, um, I had a hard, okay, all about spelling, I've talked about this before, we're almost in level two, flying through it, love it, been super helpful this year. Another thing that my daughter does one page a day of it's super supplemental, but I held back for so long because the illustrations just, or the illustrations just kill me. But a friend recommended it. She said that um, it really helped her daughter as well. And so it's called Explode the Code. A lot of you have heard of it. A lot of you either love it or hate it, and that's okay. 
Again, it's supplemental, but um, <clears throat> in terms of copy work, like I don't always make her write out the things. It's more about the phonics part of reading and, and putting pictures and words together. Um, these copy workbooks, the Getty Dubay, these are in my Amazon store, but these are beautiful. Our son has worked really hard on his copy work and our daughter's doing the same thing. We still love those. Okay. In terms of writing, grammar, spelling, stuff like that, I do use Using Language Well by Simply Charlotte Mason. This is the second book. I think I've talked about it before um, with Spelling Wisdom. I think, I, did I already say that? Okay. Anyway, book one I will be using with my daughter next year. And then another resource that we've loved, we, we did use Writing and Rhetoric for Terms 1 and 2. Our son is now burnt out on that. Um, it worked great for a season. And we've looped this in all year, but now we're going um, heavier on it. It's more of a free write, especially in spring. When you've gone through the structure over and over and over again with your kids, you, we don't need to keep hammering that home. It's great to refine it, but sometimes your brain just wants to write. And that's what this is for. And it's been beautiful. The other day he wrote a five page poem because of one of the prompts in here. At the end of the story, it's like, you know, what, what would the sailors be? singing about this you know and he went on to write a five-page poem and it was it was epic just giving our kids those opportunities has been really helpful we're still doing latin with minimus we only do once a week right now the idea is to offer them a host of i like just a complete full room of ideas um they're not going to become proficient in every single one the idea is just the exposure and it's really fun to see what they cling to and what, you know, what they let go of. Some of the independent reads for our Form 2A this term is, uh, we're almost done with the Young Citizens Reader. This is Citizenship. I do read this with him and talk to him about it. He's done just finishing this up. We probably will just keep doing our Good and the Beautiful Water um, Science Unit and keep going there, but he's pretty much done with this. This took two years to read through, once a week, 20 minutes, nothing too big. He's almost done with The Sign of the Beaver. Totally forgot what the next novel is that we chose. Anyway, I'll think of that. Our composer this term is Schubert. This is by Opal Wheeler. Um, I believe he also wrote The Wonder Boy of Mozart in that book we, uh, my son read in the first term. Really wonderful books. And then he's almost done with The Ocean of Truth. He loves biographies. We, If we have time before the end of the year, we'll be, he, he'll be doing Einstein. Otherwise, um, Life and Her Children, this is something Charlotte Mason had her Form 2 students read through. Um, and that's, that's wonderful too. Um, let's see. <clears throat> if I'm going too fast, I'm so sorry. We... So my <clears throat> Form 1 student is very hands-on. I don't know if you have kinesthetic learners, but we love, okay, I don't get paid for, the, for these, but the Kiwi Crates, these are lifesavers on the days when her lessons are over, are, are over and our son still needs to read independently and she could either wander off aimlessly or I could kind of uh, help give her some starting points. And then we do have their Atlas Crate. Again, don't get paid for these. I will link them below, but these are, they're so fun. Yesterday was Germany, so we made pretzels and we looked up the, the German dances. They're fun, <clears throat> especially in spring. You're kind of ready to like, I don't know, open up and, and do more fun hands-on things. Last but not least, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Um, Handcrafts. I've never talked to you guys about handcrafts uh, and art. Our son does the president, uh, the chalk pastel with, with Nana. Everybody loves Nana. Chalk pastel, uh, the, the, what is it? Draw it to know it, know it to, I don't know, but using pastels to draw through history. Our daughter does watercolors <clears throat> with this. She's not a fan of the pastels. So she does uh, these. This is also in my Amazon store. These books are wonderful. They're printed on watercolor paper. And I'm so excited. I'm bringing out pyrography. Wood burning, essentially. And the kids don't know that yet, but it's gonna be fun. That and pond creatures and 
we I started seeds, so we're gonna be putting those in the ground soon. I am so thrilled and I'm so excited because I've started um, acclimating what we're gonna be using next fall. And that is gonna be really fun to talk about as well with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you're excited to do pond creatures. Um, if you have ideas for simple studies, whatever it may be, I'm just so glad you're here and I'm so, so thankful for you. And I pray that you are having an amazing spring with your kids because it doesn't last forever. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great spring.